G'day folks, in this week's jam-packed offering I'll be showing you our new aquaponics system that we'll be building up on the deck. Also uh, giving you a look at removing this monstrosity from the grow bed behind me here. She's taken up well over 75% of the grow space so she's got to go. And also give you a bit of a uh, general roundup on what's growing on in the aquaponics. Just to give you a quick look at this lady, uh, it's a Chinese red amaranth and as you can see she's rather large. And from the view from the top, she definitely has taken up a lot of real estate. There's an aloe vera under there, a couple of gingers, some black turmeric, and um, a few other bits and pieces I tried to strike. Uh, but she's just taken over, so she has to go. Now we have tried to feed this to the guinea pigs, uh, the little fellas down in there, but they're not too uh, interested in the amaranth. They like their lettuce a little bit better. Um, so yeah, we pretty much we're just going to be using it as a bit of compost fill. Uh, to create some more compost for upcoming soil beds. So uh, we'll see if we can beat this storm. Uh, first off, this Chinese amaranth is a nice salad green or purple. As I've said previously, it does just taste like um, a bit of green though. It's, it's nothing spectacular. It's something that we have used in curries a bit, but not something that, you know, we throw in every meal. The reason I was letting this one grow was I was hoping to get some seeds from it. But unfortunately, the seeds just didn't uh, materialize this time around. But luckily enough, I have a couple more uh, not quite so advanced um, specimens of this over in another grow bed. Um, so I'm going to um, take them out, pop them in some um, pouches and see if we can grow them in some soil down the back. The main reason is we just really like the look. Yeah, oh, there's a little grasshopper on there. Um, Nick off fella. Um, we just really like the look of these greens or purples. Um, so we would like to keep some growing. I think they just look really nice ornamental and be nice to have them around the yard. Now, as for the age of this one, I couldn't really tell you how long it's been in there off the top of my head, uh, but the actual date will pop up there on the screen. Uh, once I go back through my videos and work out when I popped her in. But one of the good things about having this dear lady in the system was um, we haven't had a lot of plants moving through the system. So she has been using up a load of nitrate, but I have some more to pop in there. I think I've just found me some ginger and also a lemongrass. Another downfall of having such a densely growing plant is you get little critters like this in there, slugs, that are very hard to find and remove from the system. So. Yeah, that's something I might have to look at flooding the bed to try and uh, get as many of them to the surface so I can remove them later on. So I'm starting to get hit with a few drops of rain, so I'd better get a wriggle on. At least take all these branches off. So I think I've beaten the rain. We've trimmed it all the way back. But just to give you some idea next to my hand there, that's a very thick base down in there. It's about five inches or 125 mil across. And down the base, I also found a couple of these blighters as well as a couple more slugs that scurried down into the media. Oh, there's one there. So it looks like we do have a few of them in the system. And yeah, the beds need to be flooded to look after them. And these guys here will go to the fish. Uh, but I think I will tackle her in a minute because it's uh, just started to rain a little bit. In the meantime, though, we'll give these guys a treat. Yeah, they don't last long. And while we're at it, we might as well toss in a few pellets for them as well. I'm probably going to get splashed if I stay here. Uh, these guys are back onto the uh, four millimeter uh, Ridley's pellets. Uh, so I got them at a bit of a uh, sale price just before December. But the fish are going really well. Um, I actually asked a question online about what fish we should use for our new system. But I'll uh, answer that towards the end of the video. Right now, I'll give you a bit of a look at what else is going on. These marigolds here, we're thinking about pulling them out. They look like they've got a mite issue on them. Uh, no other mites on any other of the plants around here. So I'm not too concerned about them, but we'll just pull them out. I actually saved a load of flowers from them that have already dried out. So these are being quarantined for a while and I'm going to isolate them, make sure any of the mites on there perish, and then we'll plant them out and put them in the system or elsewhere down the track. Uh, over here we have a load of basil and this stuff here needs to come off today along with some more over in the bed we're cleaning out because we're going to make some pesto with that. Uh, let us know if you want a little short on how we made the pesto uh, just by leaving a comment down below and we'll get to it through the week and uh, post a little bit of a look at how we make up the pesto. And these are the two amaranth um, that we are going to be looking at potting out. I think um, they should do okay transplanted. I'll leave a lot of the clay around the roots so they don't get too damaged. And around here we have another basil that needs to be harvested. Uh, just quickly over in this bed here, we do have some bok choy that needs to come out. Uh, we're taking out a couple of them for dinner tonight definitely. And we are having iron issues in the system as well. 
uh, basically just enough, not enough in there. I ran out, so I'm using an inferior form of iron at the moment, and I need to go out and get some more DTPA. So I don't know what this storm is going to do, so I thought I'd hide under here and just remind you folks that I do have that Backyard Aquaponics Beginner's Guide. It's an online, fully interactive guide to help you folks out who are new to aquaponics. Um, there's a searchable function. You can speak into the phone or microphone on your computer and you can search for whatever topic you want within the Beginner's Guide and it will send you to those sections of the guide that thinks will help you out. Not only that, it's translated into a number of different languages now and there's also an advice button down there. You can click on that button, get two free questions with me. After that, you've got to pay five bucks a pop, but you basically get a hotline direct to me and I can help you out as you progress with your build or if something unfortunately goes a little bit pear-shaped with your current system. But anyway, that's enough uh, spruiking for now. Uh, we'll see if we can uh, pull out this plant. Now, um, oh, I found one of my plants I tried to strike, not doing too well underneath all that shade. So I suppose um, there's no real way to do this other than to just give her a bit of a rock and pull her out. We have a lot of this um, bits and pieces from the top here as well so it doesn't get dragged down in under the clay later on. Um, I have a feeling I'm going to pull out a couple of ginger plants as well. But they should uh, do alright just being popped straight back into the clay. So here we go. So we don't break off too many roots. A bit of a dig around. Might need to get a bit of height on it, I think. Hopefully not pull off the microphone. And she's a bit fragile. Oh, there we go. That gives you some idea of the root mass. I'm going to try and pull out as many roots as I can. I'm not concerned about leaving some in there because the compost worms will look after them over time. Sorry, Ginger. That's why I try to move all the uh, little bits and pieces off the top so they don't get buried down. But like I said, worms will take care of them. You come to help, have you, Jack? Oh, crikey. Oh, I think I've broken a big one there. So she should come off. Or out, I should say. Pretty easy now. Might just get a tub to put her in though, hey? So this clay doesn't go everywhere. So just to give you a bit of a closer look at the roots. So I think I might just try and shake out as much clay as I can. Probably be able to make out there is some muck around the roots there, but not enough to be a concern. Smells fine and just smells a little bit like dirt. For another good shake though. And out she comes. And just to give you a bit of a look from the deck, you can see it has totally opened up the uh, grow bed there. So we'll be able to plant in a load more. Uh, not only that, but those basil there will be coming out in a minute. Actually, we'll go down now and nip them out, as well as some bok choy for dinner. So just give you one last look at the harvest, a nice big basket of uh, basil. I'm not touching the other stuff over there. A couple of bok choy. Uh, so they'll be going up for tonight's dinner and some pesto. And just to show you what will be filling the gap here, we have a little jalapeno pepper. I actually had a couple of aphids on it when I got it in the car after purchasing it. So it's been living in exile for a while until I made sure there's no aphids left on it. Got a couple of fruit on it. So it will be going down in there. Now, I thought I'd give you a bit of a look at the new aquaponic system. Uh, this little jobby here, I got off a mate who is getting out of aquaponics for a little while. And it's a system he bought second hand. He bought just this little one here. It's a balcony system. You can get them over here for about oh, eight, 900 bucks, I think. And I think they're available around the world. Uh, this one here, he threw in a few other bits like some Beto buckets and that sort of thing. Um, but yeah, it's looking like it's a little bit too large for our deck upstairs. Uh, so I won't be popping these rails on here. These rails are a little homemade jobby uh, John knocked up. He did a fantastic job with them. Uh, they've got little uh, downpipe checkers up the end here so you can make sure your water's running nicely and just holes all the way down some guttering. And if you're familiar to my YouTube channel and seen some of the um, um, tours I've done, you would recognize this. This is Hucho's Puck. 
It's actually the uh, his uh, logo for his channel. Uh, so thank you very much, Hucho. I finally got some pucks, and thank you, John, for making them. So he had lettuce in here. Uh, they all actually bolted for seed, but to seed. Um, so he's taken them out, and there were a couple of capsicums here, or sweet peppers here, capsicums, and also a tomato. Um, I brought the capsicums home, gave them a little bit of a haircut, and planted them out in the large black bed next to the bok choy. So we're pretty much all starting off with a brand new clean little system. I'll be keeping the pump and just the grow bed and the base, and I might be adding some other bits and pieces onto it later. These rails here I might repurpose into maybe a wicking grow pouch sort of deal, like Larry Hall style. We'll just wait and see. But as for the system I'll be using, the fish tank is 210 litres, or roughly 55 gallons. And up the top here we have 70 litres, 70 to 80 litres worth of grow bed, which is that much up there. Uh, it's not a great deal, but I can expand onto it. Um, I've got a couple of ideas that I'm going to work with. Now the grow bed itself is pretty basic. It's got a little fountain inlet here, which I will be changing. Um, I like the water to come over the side. I might actually put a little canister filter on here as well, uh, just so we can clean out any of the fish muck before it goes into the grow bed. And over in this side here, uh, John has stuck in a little bell siphon, a very familiar design if you follow the channel. And that worked a treat. Uh, he said it was working really well. He only had it set up though as a hydroponic system. He didn't get time to get fish in there. Um, so the plants were growing on hydroponic nutrient. I'm washing the clay and we'll be putting uh, brand new clay in there. Now the bell siphon arrangement underneath was pretty uh, snazzy. This was set up right next to the neighbor's fence. So what John did was he put the pipe work that low that it went under the surface of the water down below and he cut a little void in the top of it up here uh, just to allow air to go in and out uh, to help burp it. So um, something I'm going to try out with our um, other grow beds um, in the existing system over there, probably the one that goes over the sump tank and see how it works as well because there are a few people who don't want a lot of splashing water. It tends to annoy the neighbours. So that's the little jobby I'll be working with. One of the rails might make a reappearance on it yet. We'll just wait and see. I did post a bit of a poll on YouTube and ask elsewhere online about what sort of fish um, people would like me to pop in here. The fish I had in mind were the spangled perch, which is a Aussie native, and also rainbow fish, which are also Aussie natives, as well as Southeast Asia, different ones all around the place. Um, so they're the two choices I popped up and asked people to put other suggestions down below. Uh, looked like spangled perch was going to win, but then rainbow fish took over and snuck in at the last, uh, which is good actually because Bianca said she prefer rainbow fish so at least one of us is happy and I'll use the uh, spangled perch in another um, grow down the line at some point because I would like to try them out uh, so that's pretty much all what's going to go in there um, if you would like to see this build actually going together uh, what you can do is hit that little subscribe button down there if you haven't already and then click the bell icon once it appears and YouTube will hopefully send you a notification once this build goes up on the deck I'm thinking about doing it as a um, startup basic aquaponic systems and give a few other examples as well. Uh, just not this pre-bought little jobby here, just to help you newcomers to the hobby out. So I think the rain's about to kick off in earnest here now, folks, so I'll pretty much will wrap it up. Thanks to everyone who comes along every week and supports the channel, all you folks who support us on the YouTube members and our Farm Your Own Yard, uh, yard uh, supporters page. Really do appreciate the support, folks. But I will pretty much all leave it there. I do hope you're all well and happy and your systems are booming. And and I will catch you next week with another video. Cheers all. Happy growing.